unlike the normal electronics in the computer, which are all based on hard materials such as semiconductors, the electronics that are inside your body, your brain, your nervous system are very different. They're soft, squishy. So how do you actually fuse those two worlds into something that is meaningful and organic? I'm Polina Nikeva. I'm a neural engineer and a material scientist. I was born in Leningrad, USSR. It was the 90s, so it was the time when the Soviet Union ceased to exist and the part that I was from became Russia. It was a relatively unsettled time, but also there was a lot of enthusiasm in terms of what Russia can become. I got to go to the U.S. for the first time to a summer school in neurological disorders. And that's where I first realized that the opportunities here were just of different order of magnitude. Following that formative trip, I knew that I wanted to go back to the U.S. I looked for different opportunities, internships, and fellowships, and I immigrated to the U.S. in 2003. Over the course of my PhD in nanotechnology and optoelectronics at MIT, I came to recognize that biology provided this avenue for an engineer to contribute to a really uh, big problems and at the same time develop technologies that were unthought of. What our lab at MIT does is develops devices that interface with the nervous system. If you're thinking about ways to connect to the nervous system that doesn't actually require an, an invasive implant. So the way to do it would be that you use magnetic nanoparticles. Those are tiny little specks of iron oxide. Since these particles are very small, we can inject it into a given brain region. And then when we apply magnetic field to the entire system, only that region is going to receive a little bit of heating from the particles. And the other part of my lab works on developing tools that are compatible with the neural tissue. Those tools are based on soft organic materials, polymers and elastomers. In our group, we developed a process to make those devices as thin as your hair. We can now record neural activity and stimulate it in freely moving animals, which was enabled by this really soft, really biocompatible probe. Neural interfaces can have many applications, allowing us to study the nervous system and develop new devices to treat neurological and psychiatric diseases, such as Parkinson's or spinal cord injury or multiple sclerosis. I also have friends who have sustained severe nerve injuries and spinal cord injuries. Having seen the types of uh, treatments and technologies that have been used to, to help them, it really inspires me to solve those issues in a more organic way than what we have right now. What attracts me to the brain, it's, it's complexity and beauty and redundancy. And the most amazing dynamical processes emerge out of that incredible connectivity.